theme of today is going to be, I'm a brand new user, right? I'm a brand new Discord uh, user. I've never used Discord before. Maybe I've used it to connect to my friend's server to chat with somebody. But I've never used a server in terms of my own. I've only ever joined it and done nothing with it. This is going to be the stream that's going to show you how to set all of that up. How to download Discord. Well, we're not going to really download it. I'm just going to get you as far as the site and you install it yourself. The next steps we're going to do is kind of go through the features and the options of the Discord server. And then we'll get into roles and permissions so that we can set up and privatize channels so that we can make it so that only certain people can see it. So after that, we're going to get into bots. We're going to talk about some Discord bots and how we're going to um, use them for managing the server, doing things automatically, like posting messages and uh, other actions. Discord's website is discord.gg, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and it's going to redirect you here to discordapp.com. Uh, Go into the login screen at the top right corner here. And when you get to this login screen, you're going to get directed to a page where you can register right at the bottom. I've typed in my credentials and I've been redirected to this welcome page. Pressing get started. It says, okay, how do you want to create your server? So the first thing is you have to give your server a name. The reason why the server region is important is because of latency. Because of that, you want to choose the one that's most closest to you. So for my reference, I want to use US East. So I'm going to press done. All right. So now uh, it's automatically put me into my own server. Now a couple things have happened here. It's made my own server. And on the left hand side, I could see that in this tab. If I tab over it, I could see the name of my server here. Below this, I have uh, buttons available to then add more servers if I wanted to join a new one or create another one. The other thing that's important to see here is it's created a couple of things for you automatically. It's created a text channel, uh, specifically a group called text channels. And inside of that group is a text channel called general. Below that, you have another group and that group is called voice channels. And inside of that group is another channel called general, but this one's a voice chat channel. The way you can tell the difference between voice chat and text chat is the little icon. The hashtag is text, the little speaker is voice. Channels can be invited to by other users. So if you have a user in your channel, in your Discord, and they want to invite somebody else to it, they can press this button and it's going to generate a link on the fly to your Discord server. Now, the reason why you might want to do this is because um, maybe you don't want a permanent link. Maybe you don't want it to be public. Maybe you just want that link to be short-lived for one person. If you wanted to, you could lock that down to only one channel. So that way people don't invite every single channel. They can then get invited to one central place where they have to look at your server rules and agree to things if you want to do that. And we'll get into that later. And actually, if you see here, it actually automatically put me into a voice channel. RTC disconnected at the bottom of the screen here. And that actually means that even though I'm in the voice chat, my connection is not live. I'm not good. So I would have to disconnect and reconnect. So we're going to disconnect just by pressing this little hang up button here. And then you hear that little noise and that's going to tell you that now we're disconnected. And then uh, you have your other options here. So unmute is going to mute and unmute your microphone. And because we're in the web browser, we got a pop up here from Google saying, do you want to allow Discord to use your microphone on this page? The other option is deafen and deafen means not only will you mute yourself, but you will also mute chat. So anybody else in the channel, you won't be able to hear them either. If you just mute your mic, you're still going to hear everybody else. They're just not going to hear you. And then the last thing you have is user settings. Most of your configuration here has to do with your personal account. This doesn't have to do with your server. This has to do with how you use Discord, um, how you use your settings to set up Discord. Uh, by default, Discord is going to look at Windows and make a best guess on what your microphone is and what your headset is. Privacy and safety, depending on how much of this you want enabled, and what type of messages people can send. This is like content filtering, so probably known websites, viruses, pornography, things like that. And the more you keep this on green, it's gonna automatically prevent or block those types of links from being posted. Then the rest of the things down here. The, the things I really care about here are just like the send data to Discord, use data to customize Discord, those types of things I don't like to do. So I turn all these data request things off, direct messages from server members. The setting is applied when you join a new server. It doesn't reply retroactively to your existing server. So if you join a new server, you won't be able to receive private messages from people if you turn this off. Authorized apps is if you have any sort of setup with any um, interactions. Better Twitch TV, Streamlabs, which I use for um, my streaming and for my channel. Discord IO, and I use Discord IO as a shortened URL for Discord. Mixer, if you want to stream with Mixer. 
and Dino. Dino is my Discord bot, which we'll get into towards the end of the stream. Next up is connections. You can see here you have all the streaming protocols, Twitch, YouTube, you know, all the streaming services and gaming services. So this is if you want to automate posting messages to them and uh, notifications, uploading of videos, things like that. I've never used Twitch's premium features, but they have some other means of transaction. Twitch has moved into the realm of becoming a game store and they're trying to offer software through their platform. For that reason, they have their own payment system now and uh, it can set that up here. Discord Nitro is part of one of their premium programs. So I think you get free games with this subscription. Uh, I've never really looked into it because I wasn't interested, but if you want to, you can see the option here. Hype Squad is, I think, a promotion. So if you're a big, um, streamer or uh, influencer of some type. You could set up events, you could set up uh, messages and reminders and badges and things like that. Voice and video is where you're gonna set up your different microphone and audio options. So if you wanna set up your microphone, you do that in the input. Input is voice coming in and output is voice coming out or sound coming out in this case. So this would be what you're listening to. So if you're somebody who's using a desktop your pro or a laptop, you're going to look for your built-in microphone or your headset microphone. In this case, I would use microphone sound blaster Z. The output would be your speakers, your headset. In this case, it would be my speaker sound blaster Z. And then you got all your settings here. Do you want to use push to talk? Meaning do you want to press the key to try to turn chat on and off? Or do you want it to detect automatically? If you haven't detect voice activity automatically, there's a sensitivity bar here and you have to you use this when you're talking because a lot of times if your microphone is not adjusted for removing background noise and things like that it's constantly on and, and people won't appreciate that right so you got to kind of take take heed to paying attention to this when you're talking to make sure that it's at a decent enough level to pick up pick up your voice properly but not at such a level that if you're talking a little bit lower than normal that it won't pick you up. Video settings camera, if you have that, and it'll see it here. And then advanced, this is just audio settings. They'll have some built-in compression settings. You could try messing with turning those on and off. There's more options below this for quality of service, attenuation, audio subsystems, and things like that, debugging, that I can't see because I'm in the web browser. But on my, on my Discord desktop client, which I'll hear, I'll show you real quick. You can see here that if I scroll down past that section, I have more options here, see? Notifications, how do you want to get messages, right? Uh, do you want to get desktop notifications? I don't like using these, but if you have the web browser, you can use this, kind of like how Chrome notifies you of things unread message badge. So that's just going to highlight a little red uh, marker or a little marker next to the window to let you know that there's a message there you haven't seen. If you're having Discord on your phone, 10 minutes after you're no longer using Discord or using your computer, it'll start sending notifications to your phone. That's what that means. Text to speech. Do you want to have that? Some people don't like these, but basically it'll play a voice over what you type. There's a TTS prompt to do this. Um, people tend to turn it off because it gets spammy sometimes. Activity feed, I think it's just for tracking games and updates on games. Uh, again, I think this is part of their game network. I haven't really gotten into this, but it's not really important to what we're doing. Text and images, this is how you want to handle seeing things. Do you want to hide or show emojis? Do you want to allow images to be seen? Spoiler content, if people put spoilers, do you, how do you want to see that? Do you want to show them? Do you not want to show Do you have to click them to show them? Appearance, so you got to just how do you want everything to look? The themes here, you can see I'm rocking the, uh, the dark theme. That might actually be my dark reader doing that. Yeah, it is dark reader, because if I go to light, it gets even darker. <laughs> How do you want the messages to be displayed in terms of the format? So you got compact and things will look a little bit more condensed. And you have a format, you can just got a preview up here so you can see how it looks. Now, streamer mode is kind of important here. If you don't want to reveal any details while you're streaming, I'm going to turn this on real quick to show you what it looks like. And what happens is when you go to another window that has any details that are, can be potentially exposed that shouldn't be to somebody, it'll hide those tabs automatically to prevent that from being exposed. You could turn that on and off automatically, or you could have it automatically detect if you have the desktop ad application. There's another option here that says automatically enable disable streamer mode. It detects when you start playing OBS. And because of that, it'll start displaying messages in Discord for you saying, I'm streaming, I'm playing this game. And secondly, it'll automatically turn this mode on and off for you. So let's get back into the actual Discord app. 